Hey, what's going on? It's Sean Marmello. Good to see you again on my channel. A little traveling video today. On this channel, we talk about things and strategies pertaining to making a living as a performing musician and a bunch of other stuff, as well as all things music. Anyway, today we're going to talk about the acoustic gig or the acoustic solo gig. Now, that differentiates from just a solo gig because when I say acoustic, I mean primarily the acoustic guitar with no accompaniment. It also could be a piano with no accompaniment. So we can just say the solo acoustic gig. And uh, it's a pretty powerful gig for you to have in your playbook because if you can play solo, you can really make a lot more money than the average musician out there that's stuck playing for band wages. I think playing solo acoustic is the way to go for a lot of reasons. If you want to make a living at this or make a, a nice side hustle amount of money, uh, playing solo should absolutely be on your radar. Your singing should be on point. You should be practicing your song list. Playing solo requires a bit of a different technique than playing in a band. You tend to fill up the space more, at least I tend to fill up the space more playing solo acoustic than I would in a band. And that's for obvious reasons. You you have to be the rhythm, you have to be the melody, sometimes you have to be the bass. You have to kind of fill the whole musical space up. And then you have to be able to sing, and you have to have the uh, independence between your voice and your two hands, whether it's keyboards or guitar, to be able to pull it off. And it takes practice, it takes a little bit, it takes a while, but you can make more money playing solo acoustic than in a band. I used to do solo two or three gigs a week, and I used to do band two or three gigs a week. And I made really, really good money doing that. And I still do. These days I'm primarily playing solo besides my tribute band gigs. There's definitely an art to playing solo, like I said. There's a few key things that you need to have together to be successful playing solo. And a lot of it is mindset. I always talk about mindset, but the first thing you have to remember is you are background music. You are not the star. The vast majority of these gigs, you're playing other people's music. You're interpreting their songs. You're playing things that people know and your background. Generally speaking, if the audience can't talk to each other across the table, 15 or 20 feet away from you, you're playing too loud. So you have to make sure you play to the room. That's the most important thing. Volume is one of the utmost important aspects of your act and will make or break you. As far as the ability to actually play gigs, they won't ask you back if you're too loud. And I know this from firsthand experience. You have to set your volume so that you're loud enough for the people in the back to hear you, but you're not too loud for the people in front. Now, if you're playing a huge outdoor gig like I play regularly, kind of on the beach tiki bar thing, you have to be a little bit louder to reach the back. It's gonna be a little loud for the front tables, but you can compensate by raising your speaker up to kind of push the sound back. First, the most important thing is your background music. People need to be able to talk. You gotta watch your volume. Now, the second thing that's important when you're playing solo acoustic is your song list. Again, and I'm gonna keep beating this into your head. You shouldn't be playing a bunch of obscure crap that no one knows but you. It can't be like your own little club your own dirty little secret song lists. You could sneak a song in here and there that's not quite as popular as the popular songs out that everyone knows and can sing along to. And I, I do that. I'll play some tunes from people that aren't humongous stars or well-known. For the most part, the songs I play are well-known. There are some really, really overplayed songs that I try not to play all the time, unless I get requests like Margaritaville Sweet Home Alabama, but you know what? The funny thing is, is we think they're so overplayed as musicians, but the crowd loves those tunes. They do. I, I, I have no idea why, but they do. So your repertoire is important. Don't play obscure stuff, play popular stuff. And also play to your crowd. If you're playing to a crowd of Gen X and boomers, people 40 and above, play their music. Don't play the uh, Shawn Mendes. 
You know, don't play stuff that's on the radio now for younger kids. If you're playing for a younger crowd, more power to you. I don't really see that many younger audiences, but if you are, pull some of that stuff in, man. Play some of the new stuff that they're that's really popular for them. But just remember to pepper in the favorites as well. There's definitely a magic song list. I don't think it's so much the songs as it is the artists. You definitely want to play Beatles songs will work for all age ranges. Eagles will work for all age ranges. You know, stuff like Eric Clapton, Elton John, Led Zeppelin, you know, Hootie and the Blowfish, a lot of 90s. I do a lot more 90s these days because, you know, the 90s were 20 years ago, 20, 25 years ago, and that's the, or up to 30 years ago. And that stuff is, uh, is classic rock nowadays. So I throw in a lot of Matchbox 20 and Hootie and uh, Vertical Horizon. And you can, if you're a female, you can do all the 90s stuff, all the Lilith Fair stuff, Cheryl Crow and Sarah McLaughlin. And, you know, the, the sky's the limit. But play songs that people know. Don't play obscure stuff. Because I'm telling you, man, people don't know it, they'll tune you out. And you won't make as much tips. Another thing, you make more tips playing solo, I found. So put a tip jar out. Like I said, put your put your Venmo or Cash app on there. And uh, you could light it up with some LEDs. Whatever you got to do to attract some people to it. I found that uh, if you put your Cash app or Venmo on there, you're going to get a lot more tips. People tip you like 10 bucks on Venmo. It's happened to me a bunch of times, so make sure you do that. You could also put your Instagram or Facebook or website on there as well. Another important aspect about playing solo is keep the music flowing. This pertains to uh, band gigs as well, but play two or three tunes through before you really stop and talk to the crowd. Be personable, be friendly to the crowd, but don't talk too much. Don't noodle around on your instrument. You know, that that's the quickest way to annoy people, I think. And uh, as far as the looping and stuff goes, if that's not your act or you're not really, really, really good at it, try to keep that to a minimum because, again, noodling around and playing leads over a monotonous four-bar, eight-bar, two-bar loop it starts to grate on people. And I know this because I've polled people on this. I've asked them. Another important thing to consider when you're playing solo is pacing. There's generally more energy in a band situation anyway. People come out and they expect that energy, but for acoustic, a lot of times you're playing to people who are eating lunch, eating dinner, talking and stuff like that. So make sure you pace your material correctly. You don't want to get out there, blast it up, and just start playing heavy, heavy, really fast stuff. They're trying to eat their lunch. It's going to be grating on them. So just you have to be aware of a lot of things. You basically have to learn how to read a crowd. And I've said this before, but... It's ultra important when, when it's just you. When it's just you playing, you need to know how to read a crowd. Sometimes you can read a crowd. People just want something mellow. You're playing James Taylor. You're doing Blackbird by the Beatles. You're playing something finger style. Other times they want energy. They want energy. And I think this just comes from practice and doing it. All right, let's talk about money. How much should you ask for to play acoustic? You should absolutely ask for no less than $50 a set, 50 bucks an hour, whatever. So if you're doing a three hour gig, it should be 150 bucks minimum. If you can't get that in your area, um, I mean, everybody's paying that now. I've never seen a place that doesn't pay that except maybe Nashville, who, you know, doesn't pay anybody anything except for tips. But uh, that's the minimum. I'll ask for $200 personally for three hours and go up from there. So it's really important that you price yourself correctly because you don't want to undercut the other musicians around town. You're going to piss everybody off. You're going to be ostracized, possibly blacklisted, things like that. And you basically, and you also, you just don't want to be a dick. You don't want to be that dick that everybody hates. You want to be cool, a part of your musical community, and everybody helps everybody out. Um, ideally, that's the kind of community you have. And so it's important that you price yourself correctly. I would say minimum of 150 bucks for three hours. If it's four hours, minimum of $200. And as far as dress goes, it goes without saying that you just wanna be, 
you just want to look professional. You want to look casual. If it's a casual place, a slightly more dressy. If it's a dressy place. And you want to look like you fit in. You don't want to look like a slob. So many of these, especially as you get older. As you get older, it's more important. Because, you know, nature's green is gold and young is king. So, when you, you know, that's why you see a lot of these performers brushing their beards and coloring their hair and trying to stay young looking because a scraggly looking dudes with long gray beards and gray frizzy hair. That might work if you're in like a dead band or you're in a jam band scene and stuff like that. And I do see a lot of these guys and they look like 75 year old scraggly looking men. I mean, they look like they stink. <laughs> You know, and uh, you see these guys on stage and jams and stuff, and it just doesn't, to me, it just doesn't look professional. And you're certainly not going to be able to play in the higher end places that, that pay better money with the more wealthy clientele that come there. They just don't want to see that. So, you know, it is what it is. You may not like it, but try to present yourself professionally and clean. Have, have a haircut, have your beard, you know, at least kind of trimmed wearing a beard. If you're not wearing a beard, you're wrong. <laughs> anyway, like I said, your song list is dependent upon the crowd you play for. What I found, generally speaking, I can play to all audiences if I'm playing Zach Brown, Darius Rucker, you know, Wagon Wheel, Kenny Chesney, The Beatles, Eagles, you know, popular music that everybody knows. James Taylor. Uh, if you're a woman, you can do stuff by Taylor Swift, Joni Mitchell, Joan Jett. I play stuff like Stevie Ray Vaughan, and I'll play Jim Croce and Cat Stevens, John Mellencamp, ACDC. A lot of 80s. You can get into 80s. 80s music is great. I don't care if it's Crowded House or R.E.M. or Poison. Every Rose Has Its Thorn. That's a gold song. Living on a Prayer, Bon Jovi. Depends on the crowd, but get people in their 40s, 50s, they love that stuff. 50s, maybe? John Denver, Country Roads. Again, Scanners, Sweet Home Alabama, as crazy it is. You know, it's one you should have on your list. I don't play it every gig. I'll do stuff like, you know, Bare Naked Ladies, Matchbox 20, Oasis. That's another important band to have on your list. If you don't have Wonderwall on your list, you're wrong. Van Morrison, that's important. Obviously, Jimmy Buffett. Uh, some of these new country guys that are out today that aren't generic, which is maybe a few of them. There's that dude that does Tennessee whiskey. I don't know his name. But like I said, if, if you hear these songs around and you've been hearing them your whole life, those are the ones that people are going to think of and they're going to want to hear. They're going to request them. Brown Eyed Girl, still a hugely requested song. I get requests for Bob Marley, Billy Joel, Elton John. You know, stuff like that that's in the common vernacular. You can't go wrong with stuff like that in your song list. In fact, I'll tell you, I think the song list would be a little bit different today than when I started out, but I'll probably put up my suggestions for your first 40 songs for solo acoustic in another video. But I'm just telling you some of the kinds of bands and maybe some of the songs from those bands that you should definitely have in your repertoire. These are the songs that I play every gig. People love them. Again, Allman Brothers. You can do Alice in Chains. Bob Dylan. Huge. You can do Paul McCartney, George Harrison, Ringo Starr and John Lennon, you could do them solo as well. Pull out stuff like Joni Mitchell. I even do Steely Dan, Paul Simon, Simon and Garfunkel, Journey. For me, I take Journey down uh, a couple steps because it's too high for me. Uh, but my singer in my Journey band can sing it all. But yeah, Journey's big. Stuff like, uh, I'll tell you a good song, you know, like Ain't No Sunshine, uh, Dobie Gray. Give me the beat, boys, to free my soul. I want to get lost in your rock and roll and drift away. Drift away. Great song. So the point is, songs that you hear. Look, I'll turn the radio on now as an example. Put on the 80s channel. Arrhythmics. You could do Arrhythmics. Let's see. You too. 
cry in the name of love. You could do U2. You could do a lot of Tom Petty as well. Dave Matthews Band. And it goes on and on and on. Like I said, I'm going to put up a first 40 songs for solo acoustic suggestion video. I'll do that next. So anyway, I just wanted to put up a quick video today about solo acoustic gigs. I think it's one of the most powerful ways for you to be able to start making good money playing gigs on a regular basis, whether it's a side hustle, whether it's your main thing, you should definitely have solo acoustic work uh, in your repertoire. As far as solo gigs, that's a whole different story because the energy is different. It's more of a, a band replacement thing and I think the gigs are different and uh, I can talk about that as well. But I hope you got some value out of this. Hope this gave you some ideas. I hope this spurred some thought. My name is Sean Marmelo. Please like and subscribe. I appreciate it. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot more on this channel as time goes by. It's a little action oriented video today while I'm on the run. So I'll talk to you soon and take care.